Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is the third and final episode of my mini series 10 Best Things I Learned from Tools of Titans and how it applies to physical therapy. But before we begin, I have some good news. Um, we are at 100 subscribers now, which I think is a huge, huge milestone for me and this channel. So I just wanted to take my time to say thank you guys for supporting me, and I'll continue to upload. Um, good and helpful content in the future. But if you've never been to this channel and this is your first time, my name is Jin. I'm a second year DPT student and I post every week on just about anything related to physical therapy. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing and liking this video. So before we get started, also one quick thing. If you haven't watched the first two parts of this series, I recommend um, starting there. If this doesn't really make any sense and I will link it above right here. So we're going to start today's episode by talking about psychedelics um, because a lot of people in this book talk about how much they benefited from that therapeutic approach using psychedelic drugs. And if you guys are not really familiar with psychedelics, um, you might have heard of DMT or psilocybin or LSD. Um, personally, I don't have any experiences with these drugs because number one they're illegal and number two I just never never did uh, I think the closest I've gotten to this kind of transcendental experience is watching Travis Scott music videos but James Fadiman who has been involved with research on these psychedelic drugs since the 60s talked extensively about how he uses the psychedelic drugs to help change people's lives in this book. So a lot of super interesting details about specific doses and the effects um, on this chapter, but the main thing that I got out of his chapter was that people use these psychedelic drugs to kind of detach themselves from their ego or their personal identity. And after they're able to detach themselves from their ego, they're able to look from the outside to inside and they realize that their ego or their personal identity isn't a big a part as they thought it was. Now you might be wondering how the heck does this relate to PT school and being a DPT student? Well once you're in PT school you spend a lot of time being a PT student. Your identity, your personal identity as a PT student is easily going to be able to consume your other identities like being a son or being a friend or being a boyfriend, girlfriend, um, because you spend so much time studying and doing PT related stuff. So because I think it's so important to kind of zone out from the personal identity that you spend the most time in, in order to not be burnt out, I schedule in blocks in my schedule where I do something fun or sometimes something useless as long as it has nothing to do with physical therapy. It sounds silly, I know, but it helps not get burnt out so easily and just keep going until the semester ends. Okay, so this next part is on Tim Ferriss' chapter, uh, the guy who actually wrote this book and put it all together on how to create a real-world MBA. So long story very simplified, Tim wasn't satisfied with the education that he was receiving at Stanford MBA school. So he decides to put his tuition money into an investment fund, which rounded to about 120K. Now with his investment fund, $120,000, he decides to invest in six to 12 companies in 10 to 20K chunks. And that's how he kind of created his real world MBA. This may seem like a very risky idea. And to me, it sounds like a super risky idea, but um, Tim says it himself in this chapter that he was only able to do it because he planned on losing 120k as a cost of learning and he also had a lot of venture capitalist friends that could give him solid advice in terms of startup companies. But the concept of hands-on learning where you're learning from a direct source as opposed to an indirect source is definitely applicable in the physical therapy field too. If by any chance you're taking a gap year between college and DPT school or if you're looking to shadow a PT in a setting where you can see yourself working in and enjoying working in the future, however you can fit in, you should try to get there 
so you can get that hands-on learning experience. It's also one of the biggest reasons why I'm looking forward to my third year full-time clinical so much is because although I think there's a lot that we can learn from textbooks and lectures, um, I, I think hands-on learning and learning from a direct source when you're actually there can be very valuable as well. Okay, so this next chapter I wanna to introduce to you guys is Dr. Brene Browns. Um, she is an author and a professor and she talks about how someone's success in their life can be measured by how many uncomfortable conversations they're willing to have. Now, I, I think this is definitely one of the top things on my easier said than done list. And from my personal experience in PT school, I definitely had a steep learning curve in learning how to talk to patients in a professional way that makes them feel most comfortable. At first, I didn't think it would be so different from talking to someone I've never met before or even talking to friends, but I guess it's also true that I've never had to really talk to anyone as a healthcare provider. So Dr. Brown's chapter in this book kind of helped me transition uh, my mindset from, oh man, I still have a long way to go and I hope I don't make my patients uncomfortable to, okay, I'm still not really making my patients feel the most comfortable they can, but at least I'm progressing and I'm doing the hard work. Okay, so the last thing I wanna share with you guys is not really from anyone in this book, but from myself after reading this book. Um, I think it's super important to keep an open mind and that makes you able to learn from other people. And with that being said, I hope you guys found this helpful and um, I definitely learned a lot of things that I could apply in my life as a future physical therapist and a DPT student. So if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment below and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for watching.